Welcome back everyone. I wanted to do a walk around of the camp trailer I built. This took a couple of years to put together and I still have a few things I'm working on but I was trying to design it ahead of time with plans for what type of activities I wanted to do with it. So let's see what we have here. So up front I did a three-axis coupler system here. Obviously the other part isn't on it but this does a really good job of allowing the trailer to move independently of the vehicle. Now it really helps when I'm getting off camber or off-road, but you do have to watch it a little bit just because it can twist and the trailer can move a little more than I had expected it to, so I just watch it pretty close. The trailer frame is primarily 3-inch U-channel. Um, <clears throat> it's a double nested box, I'll show you that here in a second. And up front here, the central piece of the tongue is obviously just a long receiver hitch. And then I've got the U-channel on each side to help support it. Obviously we have our safety chains, we have our trailer brake disconnect system right here. Over here I've got a seven round plug and then I've got also this Anderson connector. It's hooked up with number two cabling. That gives me a direct connection between the auxiliary battery in the Jeep and the two auxiliary batteries here in the trailer. It allows the solar panels on both to keep all three batteries charged. Makes it really nice for things like refrigerators and that kind of deal. So, continuing with the frame. Down here, you can see that we have, again, this three inch channel. I'm using an, yeah, an axle-less suspension system here. I used a 2200 pound rated system. Now I did that on purpose because I wanted hubs that had a 5 on 5 bolt pattern just like my tow vehicle does. Unfortunately, they didn't have those for the higher rated setup. So if I had it to do over again, one of the things that I would change, I would put on the 3500 pound system just to give me a little extra capacity. Uh, with the way I built this trailer, I'm kind of operating right at, at the limit of what this can do. Um, it works, but it would be nice to have a little extra reserve in there. But the reason I did this instead of a, an axle system is I wanted to be able to put that water tank up in there and be able to make use of it. So you can see up in here, there's the plumbing, and you can see up here where it goes up through the bottom of the box. So the box is a framework of 1x2 primarily, a rectangular tube, and then I'm using 8 inch aluminum sheeting uh, for the sides and the bottom. I used bed liner on the inside and just regular paint on the outside. And then for mounting them, I'm using half inch grade 8 hardware. I've got eight body mounts, four on each side. And what you have here are the polyurethane bushings like you would use on an old Jeep. So it does a really good job. It does raise everything up quite a bit. I've got four inch drop hubs on here as well, so it does make it sit a lot taller than I originally planned. Uh, pulling it behind my Grand Cherokee, that's actually a bit of a problem, but uh, it fits really nicely behind some of the other vehicles I have, so that was my hope with this. Here you can see this is a parking brake cable. Um, <clears throat> up in there you can see it running across. And then up front here we have our brake handle. So obviously that's running position, and then lockdown is this way. So this could be used as a backup for the disconnect safety braking. I don't have it hooked up that way currently, but I could put a chain around that handle and connect it to the tow vehicle, so if they ever became disconnected, the chain would pull the handle down. I've just chosen not to. So over here, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for lighting. So I put lighting in pretty much every place I could find. On the sides, you have LED lights here on the fenders to mark the widest points of the trailer. I also put clearance lights on the corners. These were primarily mounted because I wanted to be able to run lights further up into this rack, and this is what I used to allow me to push the wires through. And then up top here, you've got more of the same LED lights uh, that mark the top of the physical structure of the trailer. 
So it gives me a really good idea of where the corners are. So if I'm backing up at night and have to worry about trees, it works really well. Back here in the back, we have two vertical corner lights like you would see on an enclosed trailer. And then I used some recessed rigid lights. These are a flood pattern. They work really well. They're connected to the backup light circuit. Gives me a whole lot of light back here. I can easily back this thing up at night without any problems. I do have a reverse camera down here, but there are some issues with it in that the display adapter that I put in the Cherokee only turns on when I'm not moving. And the way I wired this camera, it only turns on when I'm backing up. So I need to rewire some things so I can make those two match up. Because when the camera's on, there's no display. When the display's on, the camera's not turned on. So anyway, just have to work with that. And then you can see here we've got uh, three clearance lights back here. So I put a receiver hitch back here. There's no light hookup or anything like that. So this is here primarily as a recovery point. Uh, this trailer frame is really overbuilt for what this is doing. And the nice part is this receiver gives me the ability, if I get caught in something, if I end up in a mud hole or try to ford a river and get stuck somewhere, uh, if I'm pulling this trailer, then somebody can connect to the back of this receiver hitch and use the trailer as a pull point to help get me out. It's also nice because when you look up front, <clears throat> I've got this heavy duty dual wheel tongue jack. This was, I believe, an Australian company, but it's designed specifically to, one, fold up inside the tongue, which is really nice, but two, it gives me the ability to move this trailer around no matter what it's sitting in. So this is supposed to be able to handle this, in fact, more than this trailer, uh, even if it's sitting in mud, sand, snow, things like that. So I'm supposed to be able to tow it around. What that means is I can disconnect my hitch from up here if I need to and put a pull point in there. I can do the same thing in the back. So I can manipulate this with a winch cable or tow straps or anything else that I need to hook up to allow me to move the trailer around if I get in trouble. So it works out pretty well. So the rest of the box, we have these bar latches similar to what you would see on an enclosed trailer. Um, I just made one that was shorter and I know it's not quite the same. Honestly, I couldn't figure out how to get these parts to go together the way the instructions said they should, so I just made my own. So the nice part is these are really solid. They don't move much. And if I put a little weather stripping in behind the tailgate, it would work even better. Then you have the cover. So the cover is still a work in progress. My original plan was to go with a hard cover all the way back. Uh, I wanted something that I could more securely close the trailer and keep it locked and all that. And you'll see there are locks on here in a bunch of places, but up here is the only part of hard cover that I ever built. These tie downs right here are larger than they need to be. There's the back right there, because I intended to have them hold down the front of the rear piece as well. So obviously that little 50 watt solar panel doesn't do a whole lot sitting there under the rooftop tent, but it provides a little bit of boost depending on which direction the sun is coming from. That's why I haven't removed it. But my primary solar and charging capability comes in through this. So this is a 10 gauge wire set. Uh, it comes up here and connects through the tent. And let's see if we can do this without having issues with the light. If you can see it up there, there's another set of wires going up onto the roof, and that's where I've got a 160 watt solar panel as well. So it does a really good job of keeping the batteries topped off. I'll show you what things look like inside the trailer here shortly. <clears throat> so on each side, I've got the ability to carry a single stack Rotapax in the back, so I can put up to six gallons back here, and I've got a double stack up front, so I can do up to 12 gallons here. I really don't use these very often, but my current tow vehicle has uh, two fuel tanks. So I've got plenty of reserve in there. I don't even have to worry about carrying extra. But some of the other vehicles I have don't have the same kind of range, so I wanted the ability to put extra fuel on here without worrying about it. So that's why those are there. 
Obviously, you can see the high lift jack on this side. Up front here, we have our propane. And over here, <clears throat> I have a set of max tracks. So I'm only carrying two on here at the moment. I'll step that up to four at some point. But the idea being, again, the trailer should be able to recover whatever vehicle it's attached to. That's my hope. So looking at the counter from this direction, <clears throat> you can see there are a couple of cables running up here. These connect up to some eye bolts on the upper frame up there. And underneath the counter, back here where these wing nuts are, so we got one here, one over there. Underneath there, I've got a couple of kayak rack points that uh, those connect to. So it's sitting on the fender and bolted down. So it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. And I can adjust the turnbuckles on these cables to make this level if the trailer's not quite sitting flat. So it really works out well that way. By putting it over here, <clears throat> it gives me the ability to use water and to set up my cooking supplies here. So here's my spigot for outflow of the water. And then back behind here, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, but back behind here is my switch for the water pump. So it makes it really easy for me to access water. When I'm driving, I've got a thread-on lock that I use to keep people from messing with the water supply. But uh, it also keeps it clean, so if I'm running through, say, mud or snow, then it won't be a, such an issue for me. All right, going back to the cover. So like I said, this is still a work in progress. Obviously, I didn't intend to have a soft cover back here, but I needed this finished pretty quickly, so I went ahead and put something together that would work. I've used this vinyl material before as a cover for the back of one of my trucks, and it actually does a really good job of keeping the weather out. The biggest first problem I had, so I've got a piece of extruded aluminum up in here that I've got the cover actually bolted to, and then it's tied down with these little wing nuts to the top of the trailer's frame. Initially, I didn't have that, but what I found was enough wind got through the front of the cover since I used the parts that I had and wasn't able, you know, I wasn't able to make a full width cover for the front of this can, uh, yeah, this vinyl. So what I ended up with, that enough wind got through on the corners that it was pulling this open and causing it to flap back here. So by putting this rear support in and tying it down, that actually keeps these snaps from coming loose on the road, which is really nice. So I'm going to open this up and show you what things look like on the inside. Okay, so in here I put together a drawer system. So it's just a single drawer. I've got aluminum mounting it to the trailer and then I used steel on the drawer itself because I'm not good at welding aluminum yet. But it works out okay. So this one uses uh, full length drawer slides. Uh, they're about 48 inches long I do believe. Uh, so they can slide this all the way out the tailgate. And it holds about uh, 700 pounds. So I can't think of a time when I would actually overload that. But it does make getting into my gear a lot easier. So let's slide in here and show you what's going on inside. So you can see up in here, over here on the side of the trailer, that's the plumbing going up toward the hose bib. Then back in the back, you've got two deep cycle batteries. That's 200 amp hours of uh, power supply. I've got a couple 12 volt outlets and several USB outlets as well. Up here on the upper right, you've got solar control that goes to those two connections on the outside that you saw, and then to the 50 watt panel up through the top there. Then you've got a shore power charger there, uh, just a five amp, so it's not huge. Then I've got junction blocks and a fuse block here that do a really good job of uh, getting the power when I need it. Back here in the back, this is an outlet for uh, a refrigerator that I'll be installing here soon. And then up top, I've got more outlets here in the back. So what I realized was when I'm camping, if I have the counter set up over here and I want to cook with maybe my pellet grill or if I need a little power for charging something, I'm usually sitting over here on this side of the trailer. 
Uh, the problem is, without fully retracting the cover, which is a bit of a pain to do, it's difficult to get in and out of the front up here to allow me to access my powers. So I put these back here, so now I can just unclip the corner. I've got ready access to electricity right here, and then if I want to keep it weather tight, once everything's plugged in, I can actually snap this down and I can run the, the cables out through here and it'll still be watertight. So let me pull the drawer out and I'll show you what that looks like. Here we are with the drawer out. So you can see it extends pretty far out past the back there. And it's almost complete. Um, I did have to set it back a little bit from the back of the box just to make sure that I could clear the tailgate when it closed. So there are some things here that don't that aren't as easy to get to, but um, at some point I'll be adding a refrigerator in in one of these positions and then stacking my alu boxes to make up the space. It does really well, and uh, as you know, it's not connected to a vehicle right now. So even with that sticking out the back, it never becomes negative tongue weight. And I've even sat on the back of that thing and it still doesn't do it. So it works really well, um, and I can set up my kitchen just like you see it here. So this smaller box here on the end is my pantry. That's where I keep all of my dry goods and things that I might have read, yeah, might need ready access to. The one in the middle here is my kitchen. So I've rearranged that a couple of times to make it more efficient. But it has everything I could possibly need for cooking purposes. Both eating utensils and plates and bowls and cups and all that. Um, on down to a griddle and frying pan and stew pot and things like that too. So I'll show you what that looks like in a future video. Back here, this one is a heater. So you can see the ductwork on this side. Here's the air intake for the diesel heater. So this is an S-Bar heater. Uh, it was the cheap one that I could find that I trusted the quality of, so I used it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a future video also. But the nice part about that, that gives me the ability to camp in this tent in temperatures down to, uh, I've gone down to 10 degrees comfortably without a sleeping bag. I don't like going much below that because uh, condensation builds up inside this box um, and I end up with a whole bunch of frost on it that I then have to deal with. But it works really well. I really, really enjoy it. So what I do with this, over here, this is your power connection for the tent. So for those of you who know about the Bundu Top tents, they have fans and a light inside and then they operate by means of an electric winch up inside the tent. So by pushing the buttons up there, I can raise and lower the tent pretty quickly. You just need power to make it happen. Well, I take this power cord off when I'm driving just so somebody doesn't come up and push buttons and do some damage when they don't realize that everything's clipped down and they shouldn't be doing that. So that one I remove when I'm driving. But there's also this down here. So this is the other Anderson plug that will plug into the heater. So when I'm using it, I set the box right down here next to the license plate and run the ductwork up the back of the trailer and inside that door right there. I can then put my control inside the tent. It does a really good job. So, this is the trailer I've built. There's still some things I'm working on. Uh, let me show you a couple of them. Like I said, if I had it to do over again, I would go with the 3,500 pound suspension instead of the 2,200. If you notice here, See how different the front of the fender and the back of the fender are? Well, that's because even though I thought my measurements were perfect, which, of course, they never will be. Ah, they're all gone. Okay. So there was a point during my first trip when this fender, sitting down about here, rubbed on the tire. And unfortunately, that just can't happen. So, one, if I had it to do over again, and I think I will modify these, I would put a bigger fender on here. This just gets too close to the tire. If you see in front here, there's enough room there. That shouldn't hit unless I hit the fender on something and cause problems that way. Back here, this one's okay, but the other one, I must have been off by about half an inch and it made a big difference because the other one is sitting a whole lot closer to the tire than this one does. 
So I'm going to expand these so the front moves forward and the back moves backward to keep them a little further away from the tire. Let's see, other things I would change. Oh, the tailgate. So although it's really nice to have some real estate here on the sides to mount my taillights and my latches and my lights and everything, if I had it to do over again, I would make a full width tailgate. I didn't figure I was going to need to worry about it, but I find that I actually put a lot of stuff in those areas. So if you see in here, I've got a power cord, I've got straps, I've got a base plate for the high lift. I usually will put my counter when it's not on um, along the side in there. It would be a lot easier to get to if I didn't have to reach around this. I still think I want to put a hard cover on this at some point. Um, obviously there, I had reasons for not doing it originally, but I still think I want to try it. So that's something else I'd probably change. And let's see, what else? Mm, I think that's about it so far. So this is what I have. It's worked out really well. It was a nice project. I enjoyed doing it. It was a great project to do during the pandemic, although I was still working anyway. But yeah, it works really nicely. Now a couple of things I haven't shown you up here the awning. This is a 270 degree, primarily self-supporting awning. So it really works nicely. I don't open it very often because where I live, it's pretty windy. And yes, I can tie it down, but I don't know. These 270s are nice for coverage, but at least this one is a little bit of a pain to set up and tear down. Maybe I'm just not used to it yet. And then here across the back, this is a retractable shower stall. So it doesn't bother me all that much, but I don't know, I might actually go camping with somebody some of the, yeah, someday along the line, and I might have a reason to have a shower. So there's what I have. Works really nicely. It's definitely done what I want it to, and I haven't had the chance to take it very far all that yet. So one of these days, I'll actually get it out on the road and do some things with it, but works pretty nicely. So. I will sign off for today and I'll see you over the next horizon.